Hey guys, what's going on? Today we are going to cook my famous beef jerky. All my mates always want this, so I'm finally going to make a video to show you how to make it yourself. That way I get a bit more free time and uh, I don't have to cook it for everyone. But it, it is good. It's a simple recipe. Um, it's only a, a few simple ingredients. The raw piece of meat, I think, is the main reason for this being so good. And I'm going to show you everything that you have to do. So the first thing is, I used silver side and heart silver side, so no fat. Um, a lot of people use rump steak. I'm going to use silver side. You can use normal silver side, not heart. A bit more fat in there, a bit more chewy, but you know, if you can afford the extra, get the heart silver side. It's good. There's no fat in it at all, so when you're chewing on that jerky, it just goes down perfectly. So. A few extra things, um, you can slice it with a nice sharp knife, I've gone ahead and, because I make a fair bit of it now, because it's just so good, I've gone and bought myself a meat slicer, um, live in the NT Darwin obviously, so uh, we bought this off Spotlight online, I think it costs around $50, we couldn't get anything locally, so if you can afford yourself an actual slicer, a meat slicer, do it. It, it, it just makes life so easy. Like you can get perfect, perfect thickness slices. Um, you know, cook times even. Um, otherwise, if you do it with your knife, it's a bit over the place. Makes makes it a bit harder. But if you're on a budget, the knife's fine. Just make sure you go and spend. I, I got a nice boning knife here from the local knife shop. I think it was under thirty dollars, so you can do it perfect with that. So the first thing we're going to do is cut, this is only a small piece of heart silver side, you'll, you, you'll find your heart silver sides a lot, a lot smaller than your, your one with the fat included. So we want to go sort of inch thicknesses, so if we go down through, and the big tip here is, I've bought this and I've frozen it, so as you can see now that's, that's pretty solid, the edges of it is a, is a bit soft, but you want a solid steak as I would say. So you get your piece here with your sharp knife, smash through it. You could buy, it depends how big your dehydrator is, you could, you could buy 10 of these, one might fit, it's up to you. But I've just got a normal six tray fruit dehydrator. So there we go, all the same sort of thickness. That's what you want to do. Now we'll set everything aside. Now if you, I'll, I'll bring this back because if you just had no meat slicer, this is what you want to do. You lay that slice on its side and you'll just want to do slices. Um, it depends. If you want real dry beef jerky, you'll go about two mil slices. I like doing sort of a biltong style, so anything up to five mil. Like I'll do a couple here just to show you. So get a sharp knife, slice it. Even that's not thick enough. There we go. That's a good slice. So just to show you, that's a nice slice. That's that's what I would do. That's what I'm going to aim for on the slicer. That's probably four to five mil thick. So by the time you dry it out, it's only going to be a couple mil thick, and it's still going to have some moisture in the middle. If you get, you know, your end bits are obviously going to be pretty dry, but something like that, that's, that's going to be more of your cardboard servo style <laughs> jerky. So that's not what we want. So we'll set this aside, we'll bring the meat slicer out. I'm pretty sure we paid under $50 for this, so if you're making jerky, you're going to save that much money anyway, so everyone can afford a slicer. So it, it does have adjustments of um, how thick you slice your jerky. So all I'm going to do, you're not going to be able to hear me for a bit, because it's going to be a bit noisy. You grab your slice of jerky, flat side down, Put it in there. Now, click her on. And that's one, one steak of, of jerky done already. And that's the slices you get, it's perfect. You look, every slice I bring out, look, it's all perfect. The whole lot. So you bring that out, just sit back there. 
a bit there. We'll go through our next lot just to show you how easy it is. Sliced up. If you don't have a slicer, like I said previously, go see your local uh, your local knife shop and get a nice. This is only a boning knife, but I use it for absolutely everything. Um, this is what I start off with. You can get some some pretty good strips of that. The only thing is, if you don't have a, a machine like this, you have to watch your dehydration time a lot more because the thicker pieces are going to take longer, obviously. So now I've got this done. We'll set this aside. My simple trick is get a Ziploc bag. Put all your slices in there. I don't think you can find a simpler or better way to do this. This is this is just the way. So you've got everything sitting in there. Now you add your ingredients. This is the fun bit. This is where you can make your own personalised jerky. You can make it hot. You can make it cold. You can make it. You can do whatever you want. You can make it taste like. Crap, you can make it the best jerk in the world. So, I'm going to show you the simple things. This is probably what I would call the base version of making jerky. It, it's just easy. So, the first thing I'm going to do, I've got a mortal and pestle here. You don't have to use this. I just like doing it. This is, this is how I like it. So, I've got some black peppercorns here. I've got one tablespoon of black peppercorns into the mortar and pestle. And I've got one and a half tablespoons of pink Himalayan rock salt. I just use this over normal salt, I think there's more flavor. That's good to hear. We have got two tablespoons of brown sugar. The sweetness, you need the sweetness in this. If you add everything else, there's no sugar involved, so that goes in there. You can use honey if you don't have brown sugar, but brown sugar is easier. Next we have got paprika, smoked paprika. I've got one tablespoon of smoked paprika. Not so much on the flavour side, but more of the colouring. This this changes the colour of it heaps. And it just makes your jerky look good, so put it in there. I've got half a tablespoon of mustard powder, just to add to the flavour. Chuck it in there, that's, that's one thing I like to do. Now, this is, this is where the men separate from the boys. We've got chilli powder here, straight chilli powder. You can have straight chilli powder, you can have no chilli powder. You can just make a jerky, a normal jerky, but we always like drinking this one with a beer, so we've got two tablespoons of chilli powder, just a generic chilli powder. I find chilli powder adds more spice than chilli sauce. And, as you can see here, I've got chilli, so we're going to add them in a minute. But I find chilli powder adds more of a spice than any of the above in this circumstance. I've, I've tried everything, so we can you can try what you personally like, but this is just what I like. Alright, so we've got we've got three bird's eye chilies here. Homegrown, just a mutual chilli, not too hot, nothing crazy. So I'm gonna skimp out on the chopping board here, and we're just gonna do finely chopped. Bird's eye chilies. Uh, you can you can use hotter, you can use colder chili. You, you can use whatever chilies you want. Um, it's up to you. It depends how much you can handle. So I've just got three bird's eye here. So this is the ingredients for. This is a smaller piece of beef than I'd usually use. The heart beef is a lot smaller. So if you bought a full fat beef it would nearly be double the size. So we've got that all in the mortar and pestle. So we're gonna give that a good smash around. Get all that crack gonna get all that cracked pepper and all that chili combined. Can 
just chop it up finely and just add it in. But I just find this way more, more rewarding. I don't know if it's physically or mentally, but I think it's just the way to go. Everything ends up in a nice paste, and you can just smell it. It just, oh, the flavour of it already is just crazy. You, you won't believe. So look at that all in there together. So I'm just going to grab a spoon, scrape all that off. I think if you're ready to eat that right now, you'd uh, have a bit of a bum burner on you. <laughs> so now, just a simple Ziploc bag. We're going to get the mortar and pestle. Just going to scrape that into there. Quite a thick paste. Make sure you get it all because this is 99% of your flavour. You skimp out on any of this and your jerky is going to miss out on the final product. So now we've got all that out of there. Scrape it out. That's pretty much all your spices. That's, that's the main bit. So we can sit that aside. Now we've got two ingredients that we need to add now, actually three. So we've got one here now. This is lime juice. You put this in there, you're going to realise. Do one without lime juice, do one without. I've got two limes in there, just two limes. Uh, if you want more of a lime flavour, add the zest. The zest brings a good flavour in, uh, it's a lot stronger than the juice. And I'll grab the rest right now. We have soy sauce. We have Worcestershire sauce. We have a generic chilli sauce and we have a barbecue flavouring sauce. Get them from any of your shops. This is what I recommend. So, number one, soy sauce. I have a quarter of a cup measurement here. We're going to go, for this size beef, we're going to go one quarter of a cup of soy sauce. Worcestershire sauce. If we can get that one out there. We're going to go an eighth of a cup of Worcestershire sauce. So if you've got a quarter of a cup measurement, just do half. There we go. Worcestershire sauce has got a, a nice, good, strong flavour to it. So. Don't skip out on that. I, that's probably my one favourite, Worcestershire sauce. Now, chilli sauce. This is, this is a bit that can get confusing. Chilli sauce, we've put chilli powder in. Um, you can make this whole recipe with no chilli involved at all. But, chilli powder, a bit of chilli sauce, I'm not, I'm not going to put it in the cup, I'm just going to squeeze in probably, I reckon, two tablespoons of, of sauce. The bigger the amount of jerky you're making, the more you're going to put in. The more spice you can put up with, the more you're going to put in. And the final touch, I'd, normal barbecue sauce, yes it does help, but vintage smokehouse, it's got that extra smoky flavour, it, it's good. I think you could just use this on itself, it, it's got a nice flavour. So we're going to put a good amount of that in. I would say four tablespoons, four tablespoons of the Grill Master sauce. So now that we've got everything in there, I don't add anything else. We've got everything. We've got the salt, we've got the pepper, we've got the chilli for the spice. We've got everything else we need. We've got the soy for the sweetness, we've got the brown sugar for the sweetness. This is where it comes in handy, having a Ziploc bag. So, zip it open, leave an inch open, roll it up. Get all the air out of there. Zip it up. Give it a punch around on the on the table. Get everything mixed up together. This is where the magic happens. All the flavours into that meat. Now, my secret is, I like to leave this for three days. Every morning before you go to work, give it a good punch around, mix around. When you get home from work, do the same thing. But 
You can, you can do 24 hours if you want, if you're in a rush. I like to do it for three days. I'll leave this for three days. And then we'll put it in the dehydrator. Flavor through the whole lot. And I'll show you the rest of the techniques once we put on the dehydrator. Hey guys, and welcome back to part two of our homemade jerky. So yesterday, we made the marinade up, sliced it, and we're all ready. It's been sitting in the fridge overnight in our Ziploc bag. Plenty of flavour in there. So, pretty much today we've got to put in the dehydrator, and I put a dry rub on it as well. A bit extra seasoning, a bit more flavour. Uh, it's an easy way to get extra chilli into it as well. So I'm going to start off by, I've got a colander. You can do this over the sink or in a bowl, as I'm doing at the moment. I found this is the easiest way just to get rid of the excess sauce. So we're just going to go like that. Get rid of that in the sink for now. Give that a bit of a slush round. Mm, tastes good. So now we're just going to set that aside and let that drain off for a little bit. Now just a simple dry rub, you can put whatever you want on this, pretty much like the marinade. So, got the mortar and pestle again. A bit more pink salt. Now measurements don't matter too much on this one, you want a fair bit, you use more than you think. So, I'm going to go, say, two parts pink salt to one part black pepper. And then I've just got some crushed chili flakes. I don't find these real hot, but they're a nice bit of a zing, so. Uh, a, a teaspoon. A teaspoon of flakes, roughly. And as I said it yesterday, my favourite additive is the good old just chili powder. So I'm going to go in there with another tablespoon. That's the one that gives it the zing. Seal them back up. Grab our. I did have this earlier for this, but. Sit that there, so it's cleaning up a bit of mess. Now, yeah, we'll bring our jerky over and just lay it out like you would any fruit or anything like that. So I don't make this, like I said, I cut this quite thick, more of a, a biltong style instead of your cardboard servo jerky. If you do like it dry and a lot tougher, you can just dehydrate, dehydrate this a lot longer or you can do thinner slices. So, this is my little magic bit, so we just grab a good pinch. Give each bit a good drenching in it. It soaks straight in, so you don't really notice it straight away. 
gonna find the flavour this adds is just beautiful. Grab the last pinch out of there, just go crazy with it. The more flavour on it, the better. Alright, pretty much that is that's how you make jerky. Now we've just got to dehydrate it. So we turn that on, set our racks on, get rid of some of our rubbish. Turn her on, fan kicks in, crank her right up to 68 degrees, put the lid on and let the magic happen. Now, I'm not going to film flipping trays because that's just boring, so I'll be back when we have jerky ready to eat. Alright guys, so the jerky's been on for just over 8 hours. Started pulling some off for 8 hours and the rest took about another hour and the whole lot was done. The best way that I feel if it's ready is it's still pliable but when you rip it apart it's got that, that white flesh in there where you tear it. If you pick it up and it still feels moist and wet, leave it a bit longer. So, but you'll have to go through and pick out the bits that are the ready, ready first and, and let the rest go but I've got a couple of trays here I've already had some so what we're going to do now is chuck it on our plate so here we have it folks Pat's homemade jerky tender as Mm. You won't get a better jerky anywhere else. Enjoy guys, go make some jerky.